G'day and welcome to Choosing Your Uni. This is the podcast for students who are thinking of studying at university in Australia. In each of these episodes, we are gonna be meeting somebody that can help you on your journey and we're gonna be talking about their experience at university, at a particular university and in a subject area. And my guest today is Riley Thompson at the University of the Sunshine Coast. Riley, awesome to have you here, mate. Oh, it's so good to be here. Uh, Go and have a chat. (laughs) Yeah, it's great. Mate, um, let's start off. Tell me a little bit about yourself. How about we start there? Like, what do you study here at Sunshine Coast? Fantastic, yeah. So I'm studying uh, a Bachelor of Psychology Honours currently. I'm just going to the end of my second year. I've got my exams coming up uh, in two weeks' time. So getting to the pointy end. How did you choose psychology? It's a great question. I get asked all the time, you know, what, what, what about psychology made you want to do it? Um, I was actually watching YouTube videos about psychology, <laughs> literally, <laughs> it's dangerous, in year 10. Um, and, you know, I just started catching on to all different kinds of stuff that I was hmm. really interested in. Uh, and I thought, why don't I actually study this at university? Huh. Like, why don't I make something out of it? Uh, and so that's, that had me thinking, and it was in the back of my mind, uh, you know, from year 10, year 11, and then in year 12, I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to do that, and I'm actually going to study that at university. So, what were you, what were you studying in high school? Um, I was just doing a bit of everything, you know, maths B, maths C, all the all the classic subjects. Yeah. Um, we didn't have psychology on offer. Okay. Uh, that would have been really awesome if we did. Yeah. Uh, but just didn't have that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And okay, so let's talk about University of the Sunshine Coast. Mm-hmm. I've just spent the last couple of days walking around here. It's a really nice place. Um, Tell me why you chose USC. Okay, so the honest reason is it's close to home. Perfect. That's the first (laughs) one. I mean, university is close to home. That's definitely a good point. Um, But then going to the University of Sunshine Coast, I found out that it was actually awesome. Like, I just thought it was the, the closest option to me. I realized there was so much about it that I really enjoyed, especially the community aspect. Uh, you know, it's great to walk around campus and see familiar faces. Uh, that's something that I really enjoy and to be able to just meet people and have a chat, I think that's, that's really awesome. And then of course, you know, um, having close connections with your tutors and your lecturers uh, and then having the beach as well, that's, that's really good. <laughs> How far from the beach are we? Here? Uh, here, we're probably like 15 minutes. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, great. And I know you have a special collection, connection with the beach, which, which we'll get to a little bit later. Tell me more about what you really like here. So you said community mm. is important. But what does that mean for you know someone coming out of high school that, that's never been to a university? What does that actually mean? Yeah, okay, great question. I think it can mean a few different things. First off, volunteering. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's something I got involved in straight out of uni. I was like, what am I going to do at uni? I didn't know anyone. Uh, I rocked up at orientation week and was like, wow, okay. There's a lot of people here. Yeah. And I, I didn't know how am I supposed to meet people? So volunteering was the first thing I did. And you get to meet a lot of people that also volunteer as well. And you also get to become involved with the, the university community. What, what is volunteering? Like, what do you actually do? Some specifics of volunteering were I did some campus tours. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I took a group of uh, 30 prospective students to university and essentially guided them around the university and said, hey, nice. you know, this is where you can get some food. Like, here's where you can, you know, hang out. Uh, and so that was good to meet people who I've then progressed to become friends with who are mm-hmm. actually you know, like coming to their end of their first year now. Uh, so that's been a really good experience. And then also, uh, I mean, sharing study tips, that's another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, becoming involved in events as well. So, you know, sausage sizzles, all that kind of stuff. And so it seems like there's quite a few opportunities here to get involved in those sort of things. Even things like clubs and societies mm-hmm. where you can volunteer to be one of the leadership on those. Yep organizations as well yeah yeah so at usc we've got uh what we call the students as partners Mm -hmm. initiative and so that's Mm. essentially like student representative work uh so it starts at your uh, school social groups which essentially represent say the school of uh health and behavioral sciences that's one of them okay i'm with you Mm -hmm. then it goes to the student representative council which is you can think of the next step up uh, and then from there, it's the student senate. And so we have all different aspects and people that are representing certain groups, say, for example, a high performance student athlete group, yep. uh, which is the group that I represent. Yeah, cool. uh, and so that's a, a tiered system, which then uh, all reports to the USC council. And so that's how we can make a lot of change. Got it. Uh, yeah. Awesome. So tell me what else you like about University of Sunshine Coast. Something that's big for me is the, the high performance student athlete program. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got involved with that in my first semester. 
Uh, I'm actually a, a longboard surfer, so that's, cool. that's how I got involved uh, with the High Performance Shin Athlete Program. And from there, I was able to meet uh, fellow athletes in all different sports, which was fantastic. Yeah, it's really good um, to, to be able to catch up with people, um, go to the athlete lounge and be like, hey, how's it going? You want to like, study together? Uh, you want to catch up for lunch? So that's really good. Uh, and it also provided me with work opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I was doing uh, an initiative called the, the Sport for Thought program, uh, where we went out to schools all around uh, Queensland from low socioeconomic backgrounds and essentially uh, presented to them and said, hey, look, you can go to university and you can also follow uh, sporting interests. Uh, so we're really trying to, to push the message of um, you know, university education uh, and the, the pathways and the opportunities of that uh, that can give individuals. So that's definitely something that was awesome. I can imagine straight away, you as like an elite sports person, having that instant community with people, you know? And I mean, the facilities here are amazing. Mm. Like, honestly, facilities here at USC sports wise uh, are as good as some of the, you know, fanciest <laughs> big universities in other parts of the country. Yep. Well, so really first rate. I imagine you walk in there and you're just like, oh, this, this is somebody that's like my tribe, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're elite. How, so when you say elite sport, yep. how elite do you have to be? Like, I'm a good cyclist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, fantastic. But I don't know if I'm an elite cyclist. Yep. So, so what's the level? Like, what gets you into that program? So the High Performance Athlete program works through a tiering system. So mm -hmm. it goes through from tier three to tier one, yeah. uh, which is everywhere from state level uh, to international level and Olympians. Okay. So it's not like me being a weekend warrior road cyclist, <laughs> I'm going to make it in. But pretty much like if you've got some sort of like good ability yep. and you're working hard, you've got a good chance. 100%, yep. yep, definitely. Fantastic. Cool. So what else about USC do people need to know before they come to study here? What's it like? like what's the vibe like here on campus? The vibe's awesome. Um, I love being able to walk around and literally recognize people. Mm. Uh, that's something that, of course, like I couldn't do when I first started my degree. I didn't know anyone. Uh, but it's something that over the, the semesters, as you meet people, as you hang out at the brasserie and uh, get a bit of food and say, hey, how's it going? You know, can I sit here? Mm. Uh, you start to, to recognize people. Uh, and it's, it is that community vibe that I touched on just before. Uh, so it's great to be able to, to meet people and, you know, make friends. It's, I think it's definitely an advantage of the sort of smaller universities. And definitely like, I mean, you, you, this is technically a regional university yep. as well and people who go to those places, because you've got better access to your academics mm -hmm. and you know, the classes are smaller, but inherently you're gonna to get to know people a bit better, like you feel a little bit lo less lost. 100%. Yeah, yep. which is definitely an advantage for a, for a place like this. Let's talk a little bit about um, psychology. So mm. you sort of said that you got into it because you, you know, you'd looked at some stuff when you were going through high school and you're like, oh yeah, psychology. But what's it, so what do you actually do? Like first year student comes into a psych degree, what do you actually learn about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so psychology starts off uh, very broad at the start. I remember one of, my, uh, one of my classes, every week we looked at a different type of psychology. Sure. Uh, so it went from clinical to organizational uh, to sports, uh, positive psychology, and I was like, wow, because I went in thinking hmm. that I was just becoming, gonna become a psychologist. Yeah. And that was just the, yeah. the way it was. It's definitely eye-opening psychology, and there's a lot of uh, applicable aspects to all different types of careers uh, and all different uh, experiences as well. Uh, from a, a more practical standpoint, it, it covers a broad range, as I said, uh, of subjects in the first year. Uh, now that I'm in second year, it's starting to become a bit more specific. Uh, so I just did a, a motivational and emotion uh, hmm. class where we looked at a case study. Uh, his name was uh, John Green. Uh, and we looked at, he was a pre-diabetic patient, uh, client, sorry. Uh, and he was, we looked through his history and we had to develop uh, a motivational framework with which we could actually implement to help him hmm. uh, on, on his journey. So uh, it definitely becomes more specific. And then uh, of course that follows on as you progress later on your degree into honors and potentially even uh, in postgrad as well. So have you decided yet what branch of psychology you're going to pursue? Um, not completely. Mm -hmm. uh, I've kept my, my options pretty open uh, because there is so many fascinating areas in psychology. Uh, so I, I definitely haven't picked something. I do have you know, a few areas that I am interested in, like organizational business psychology is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Positive psychology I really enjoy. Um, social psychology, which is most people's favorite, especially when they're studying is really interesting as well. Um, so who knows? Maybe why, even why, why? Tell me why. <laughs> <laughs> social psychology, why? Why do people love social psychology? Yeah, what okay. is it? 
Awesome. Uh, social psychology specifically is, you can think of it as a really applied form of psychology. Mm -hmm. um, so you're looking at uh, you know, the interactions between people, why people do certain things, um, anywhere from you know, individual like, identities uh, to, to groupthink and how groups interact mm. as well. It's very interesting. Uh, and it's actually been one of my favorite courses so far. I, I can totally get that. Years ago, I read a book called The Definitive Book of Body Language. Wow. And if you want to, I mean, you, you appreciate this as a psych <laughs> student. Um, if you look at people, people give away so many clues as to what's actually going on up in their head just in terms of their body language. Mm -hmm. It's very well documented. And you read this book and seriously, afterwards you walk around and you see the way that people are, you know, sitting or like this or, you know, <laughs> hunkering in a corner. And it's like, you can actually read people's, yeah. th not read their thoughts, that's too, too micro, but you can definitely get a sense of what's going on with people. Let me just sit up a little bit. Yeah, that's up. right. Um, that's right. <laughs> We're feeling very <laughs> comfortable right now. <laughs> totally get that. What would you say to somebody that's in high school because what I thought was really interesting that you were just saying was like, I'm still trying to work out mm. what I'm really going to focus on. Yep. And you're two years down. Mm. So what advice would you have for somebody that's in high school that's maybe starting to stress about, oh, I need to make this decision for the rest of yep. my life? Yep. Yeah. Um, it really follows on from my experiences is you don't have to have everything sorted out. Mm. Uh, you know, if you're in year 10, year 11, year 12, you don't have to have things sorted out because, hey, you could go into university and then change your mind and you can change over to another program. Uh, so don't feel like anything is set in stone. Um, you know, the world is your oyster and there's so many different opportunities that uh, you can always take. So definitely, I, I understand the feeling uh, because I was feeling a similar thing uh, back in school before I just decided to do psychology. I was like, oh my God, how am I going to make a decision? Uh, and so honestly, just choose something that you're interested in uh, and, and go for it and have the, uh, the freedom of being able to change your mind in the future. So accurate. I, I really think that when you're in high school, it's kind of painted as this like rest of your life decision. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, oh, it's just fucking not, right? It's just like, it's just the next step. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like I'm down the track now, right? <laughs> and like, even now it's, it's still always, it's always just like, what's the next step? Mm -hmm. You know, we had to close a, a very successful business we were running because of COVID. And now we're just like, oh, well, shrug. Like, yep. it's just, we got to do something next. That's always just the next mm. progression. Yeah, it? it's almost working on uh, adaptability mm. rather than working on a specific thing that you want to go for. Completely. That's, that's something you can keep in mind as well. Yeah, completely. What I really wanted to ask about was day in the life mm -hmm. of a psychology student. Mm. What do you do in terms of like the actual learning? You know, lectures, practicals, what does that actually look like? Mm -hmm. Yes, the way it's working at USC at the moment is like a blended learning. Mm -hmm. um, I can't speak for other universities, but USC, we have our uh, lectures online. Yep. Uh, so we're able to pretty much watch them at any time, um, preferably before your tutorials. That's always <laughs> the best. Um, but so yeah, we've got all our material on there. Uh, and then we'll come in class for our tutorials, um, you know, talk within our group, um, talk with our, our tutor, uh, learn a bit more, try and apply that um, you know the knowledge and the uh, the theories that we're actually learning to specific cases to our own lives as well, and then of course it's it's revision from there and seeing if we can apply that to say other forms of media as well. Uh, so in our personal lives, a movie we watch, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, focusing on that applicability. Is it very technical? Um, like, it, do you need to be great at maths or any of that other sort of stuff? Like, what what is psychology good for? Mm, that's a big point that you bring up there is mm. maths with psychology. People always say to me. Like, do you need to be good at maths mm. to, to study psychology? And there is definitely a, a maths aspect to it. Um, statistics, you know, everyone just recoiled thinking about statistics. It was actually one of my favorite exams, All right. uh, which is very weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm in my own corner. But uh, yeah, I, right. I found it interesting, um, but maybe that's just me. Uh, I, I do think there, there is a, a certain aspect to the, the mathematics side of psychology, which is a lot more on computer, computers nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's not so much uh, calculating by your hand, although there is a little bit of that. Um, but I feel that having that mathematics side more applied to what we're actually learning yeah. is a lot more interesting. You're not just you know, learning formulas and applying those to questions. It's very much more applied. You're looking at populations and how, you know, correlations between mm. certain variables. I find that makes it a much more interesting experience. It's funny, it's funny you say that because 
I hated statistics yep. at university. I was, oh, okay. I, I was a science biology student, yep. so you know I saw heaps of statistics with all the research papers and stuff you had to read, but I just hated it. Mm -hmm. And it's not actually until now I'm out in the kind of working world yep. that I s look for statistics now to help me understand the world. Oh, wow, okay. It's funny, yep. isn't it? Yeah, because a statistic just tells you something about the world or tells you something about people's behaviour. Mm -hmm. So as a, as a really applicable, oh, sorry, really practical thing, it's like um, how many people visited your website and yes. how much time on site and what did they do there and what's the conversion rate from this to that. Like, yep. That's super practical applied stuff. Mm. But if you back all the way through to it, like understanding introductory statistics is probably one of the most valuable you know, skills for any discipline. 100%, yeah. yeah. Yep. Downstream. Realizing uh, just how much screen time you've been using, you know, the oh, average of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Five hours, oh my God, that's, that's a lot of time. But yeah, yeah, so that, that uh, form of application of uh, statistics and maps is definitely interesting. And if your screen time is five hours per day, don't worry, you're not a lost cause. You are amongst <laughs> friends. <laughs> From personal experience, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. What else are you involved in here on campus? Um, something else I'm involved in, which is uh, a paid form of employment here at the uni, is the student experience mentor cool. um, gig. So essentially what I'm doing is uh, I'll be calling first year students and saying, well, you know, welcome to the university. Here's a few tips on things that you can look for. Here's the websites that we're going to be using. Uh, here's ways that you can connect within the community. I'll be talking about the, the students as partners uh, framework that we have as well as volunteering opportunities. And also I can help people out with, you know, filling in their application, um, you know, enrolling in courses. And so just being that helping hand that, you know, you, is really helpful when you're starting uni. Because there's a lot of questions that you don't know the answer to. So who, who, gets, who gets those phone calls? Every unit. Everyone. Every, every student, yep, that's signing every up student. for a new program. Wow, the uni calls every freaking student. Yeah, every student. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I haven't heard, about, heard of any other uni mm. doing that. That's really neat. Yeah, yeah. So... What kind of response do you get from people? So, okay, firstly, if you are signing up for USC, is that domestic and international? Yep. Oh, wow, great. So, there you go, you're signing up for USC. Yep. Um, you can expect to get a phone call from, what was the name of the, a student mentor? Yeah, student experience oh, right. mentors. Student experience yep. mentors, awesome. What kind of reaction do you get from people? Oh, look, it's awesome, you know, <laughs> talking with people who are starting out, you know, have loads of questions, or, you know, can be really anxious as well. Uh, and it's great to say, you know, look, I was there, you know, just, you know, a year and a half ago, I was starting university and I had no idea what I was doing. I've been okay. I think you're going to do awesome as well. So it's, it's what, great to have a conversation. What's the most common question that you get? The most common question? Let's see. Because um, like things like enrollment, yeah. every uni, I'm sorry, but unis all have to lift the game when it comes to enrollment. Yeah. It's such a mess. So, I mean, they're probably much better than, they, than they've ever been in the past, but it's hard. Like, yeah. it's hard to get yourself enrolled. Yeah, typically it's uh, what courses do I enroll in mm -hmm. for my first semester? And so that's where we can help the students out and say, oh, look, this is what is recommended for a study sequence. Uh, we can help them out uh, applying, you know, putting in their preferences for each of these classes. Uh, and yeah, it, you know, it, we can help that process and make it a lot easier. Do students, like, let's say students going into a psychology program. Yep. And they want to talk to someone about that whole progression outside of the mentors are there people on the academic side like academic course coordinators or something like that that students can get advice from yeah yeah so you can literally contact your course coordinator you yeah. can send an email and say hey look i have a question of uh, you know what are the career options here is this going to be available how are lectures going to be done you can literally contact your course coordinator and ask them those kinds of questions uh, the good part about the welcome call is and this is something we try to do is we try and have say a student that's uh, studying psychology currently call up students who are just enrolled in psychology. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I can, you know, if I get someone that's on psychology, I can say, hey, look, this course is really good. You know, you can look out for this. Um, keep this in mind when you're doing that one. Here are the options, you know, here are career options as well. So I can also be that point of call. I love the fact, I mean, there may be other unis that do this sort of stuff, um, but I, I love the fact that the institution is trying to make students more than just a number. Yep. But trying to connect make that connection straight up must be pretty awesome for you too because if you run into people around campus they're like yeah no way you're like you're the dude that called me up yeah yeah they go oh look your voice sounds really familiar i'm like oh does it and they're like did i get a call from you like a year ago you know on the phone i'm like yeah that, and they're like wow okay so yeah it's you literally bump into people who have gotten your calls so that's awesome the, the other thing i just wanted to touch on too because working on campus mm -hmm. there must be some serious advantages to that yep 
yeah. yeah you you can walk around and like you know you meet people hey how's it going yeah. you having any shifts recently uh that, that's awesome as well it's got a- that any, any tips for people about finding a job on campus yeah okay i think the best thing to do is literally get involved as much as you can that's how i got my opportunities is i started out volunteering i then got involved in representative work as well and i just happened to get an email sometimes saying hey riley look you're doing an awesome work a job you know, are you interested in this? And I said, yeah, awesome. And I grabbed the opportunity. So becoming involved is a really good way to go. That's, that's such a good tip. I, I would double emphasize that. The number of people I've spoken to yep. who, I mean, because you can volunteer literally anywhere. Mm. You can go to any department, any lab, any place and be like, hey, I just want to help out. Yep. And nine times out of 10, people are shocked and then be like, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, yeah, we need all the help yeah, we can get. Exactly. And then that's what leads to like paid employment mm-hmm. and you need to pay really well. Like yep. a student, it's really good, yep. really good money. So. It's also a really good way of boosting your confidence. So doing those volunteer roles, I was able to get up and speak in front of people, which is really scary at the start. I was absolutely terrified. But the more you do it, especially within a volunteer role, you become more confident. You start learning a bit more about university. And you can even apply it to your own studies as well. You mentioned earlier that, you know, longboarding yep. is one of your passions. Tell mm. me about longboarding mm, yeah so longboarding um it's where you're surfing a a, a surfboard over nine feet in length nice. uh and it's just it's the best feeling for anyone that's surfed before um you know you once you get up on a wave it's your whole body everything's into it so it's a real passion of mine that's something that i've actually taken on to a competitive level as well mm-hmm. uh and as i said that's how i'm part of the high performance student athlete program uh, one thing that keeps me going is the, the sense of community within longboarding as well, uh, which is sort of a, a microcosm for university as well. Being able to go to different competitions all around Australia uh, and the world uh, and being able to, to meet familiar faces, uh, have that connection uh, and be able to, to share a passion for something. Uh, it's just amazing. Where have you traveled to? Um, so I've traveled mostly within Australia, especially from a, a competitive standpoint. Unfortunately, COVID sort of stopped everything when that came along. I was on the, the first Top of the World Tour, which is actually just up here at Noosa. Nice. Uh, so that was great. Uh, and then COVID threw all the plans away. Uh, but yeah, I've been a, over to WA. I've been down all throughout New South Wales. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And ambition to travel elsewhere in the world? Oh, well? hopefully. Yeah, yeah. That'd be absolutely awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely on the cards. What kind of, so let's, let's shift gears a little bit. Let's think about somebody that's overseas, mm-hmm. that's never been to Australia before, but's maybe thinking about coming and studying in Australia. Why would somebody want to come to the Sunshine Coast? Fantastic. Uh, that's a great question. I think we can start off if you just Google Sunshine Coast. <laughs> it is absolutely beautiful. It's a really good spot. Um, the beaches are nice. The temperature's great all year round. Um, so I think that's one of the big draw cards, especially for the University of the Sunshine Coast, having the beach right there. I mean, where else, you know, there's not many places you can experience that. So that's definitely on the top of my list. What else other than weather? I think another big point uh, for international students especially is for the University of the Sunshine Coast, there's kangaroos on campus. Nice. <laughs> I mean, that, that's an experience in and of itself. Um, I've definitely got some selfies with kangaroos before, so that's awesome. Cool. And then further to that, um, it's small classroom sizes. It's the connection with your tutors and your lecturers. You're not just a, a number on the page. You're not just another dot. Um, you're actually a, a person, you know, you're a node in a network. You, you create connections with people, um, students, and within the broader community as well. That's, that's a really big draw card as well. That sounds like a bit more of an authentic Australian study experience. Mm rather than and like i don't want to like once again like everyone needs to make their own decision um for some people being in a big city like sydney or melbourne is just like the best possible thing yep but it sounds like for some people that are wanting to like really connect more with a unique australian experience be in a smaller place where they might be feel more part of the community yep. this might be a good option for them exactly yeah definitely good points yeah i think also like having traveled all over the country like the stretch of coast from here all the way up to Cairns is one of the most awesome places to go traveling. So yeah. <laughs> obviously uni students, if you're here for a short time, you're here for a good time. And uh, like that's a good place to be. Good for surfing too. Traveling. So yeah. keep that on the list. Can you learn to surf here? You yeah, definitely. To. Yeah, 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 100%. There's uh, learn to surf uh, lessons all along the coast. Yeah. So yeah, pretty Maybe good. Side yeah. hustle for you, mate. It's like <laughs> international students, this is, this is, this is your guy. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, awesome, mate. Um, anything else that you can think of that maybe you weren't expecting mm-hmm. about 
USC and psychology. Like, both, both things, like when you started here, something that surprised you once you got into it and you're like, oh shit, I had no idea that it would be like that. I think it was a lot more personal than I thought mm. it was going to be. Uh, I just assumed that, uh, and it's something we've been touching on, I was just going to be another person. Well, I went to my first tutorial and there was a, a class of about 40, 40 people. And so you could look at everyone in the face, uh, you know, round desks. It wasn't just like a, a lecture theater. And it was like, wow, okay. Like these are the people who I'm going to be seeing for the rest of my degree. And so that was an awesome realization. Uh, and it was also good to see at the, the start of my degree where I could start making connections with the people and know that I'd see them next year and know that I'd see them the year after. So that was something that I didn't expect. Uh, and I think that's, you know, if you do go to a larger university, potentially that could be a bit different. Um, but going to the University of the Sunshine Coast, that was really special. Yeah. Do people tend to hang out here? Mm -hmm. Or is it like people come in, do their thing and go? Uh, it depends. Uh, it, you know, different types of people like doing different things. Mm -hmm. I love to come to you know, university and hang out for a bit. I'll go and get uh, a student discount meal over at the, the brasserie. Uh, you know, I'll just be <laughs> hanging around, walking around, see if I can recognize anyone. So there's definitely options for both. You know, if you prefer to, to, to go and surf, go and have a good time, that's, that's totally an option as well. You don't have to stay on campus. Uh, is everyone allowed to use those sports facilities over there? Or are they just limited to the high performance folk? Yeah, so we've actually got um, two gyms at the moment. So there's one community gym, which anyone can use. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've also got the high performance student athlete gym, which is for the you know, high performance athletes and also for um, you know, uh, national sporting teams that come here and, and stay for a bit as well. Um, so definitely, you know, if you're a university student, you can go over and use the community gym as well. That's, that's awesome. And the, you know, of course, the pool, the riding track there as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Mate, where do people find you if they want to follow your surfing adventures? Oh, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. So my Instagram uh, is probably the best uh, point of call. That's at Riley D. Thompson. Uh, so, you know, if you want to check out some photos of me surfing, that's normally where I upload them. Details will be in the show notes below. Thompson with a P? Or Thompson? No P. No P. Yeah, no P. You're a no P Thompson. Yeah, yeah. There's not many of us. I mean, it's still a lot, but... Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Mate, so good to talking to you here on Choosing Uni. Thanks for, thanks for giving us your time. Oh, fantastic. Uh, and thanks so much for, for having me here, Rob. It's been awesome. That's it for this episode of Choosing Your Uni. I look forward to seeing you next time. Remember, hit the subscribe button so that you get all of the latest content. I'm Rob Malicki. Catch you next time.